Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Yeti Crossroads 22, which is a rugged commuter and EDC pack. A little while back we took a look at the 27 liter version of the Crossroads backpack and that was a really solid minimal travel and larger EDC bag. I really liked a lot of the features that it had and it has a very solid build quality so I was excited to have a chance to check out this smaller, more EDC focused version. In this video I'm going to be talking about my experience using this over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, I want to thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, the aesthetic here is similar to other bags in the Crossroads series, so it's got a little bit more of a functional and outdoorsy vibe. It's got straps, attachment points, handles, so it's not the most minimal bag, but it's not so overwhelming that I would be uncomfortable taking this into a variety of environments such as campus, walking around the city, or going into the outdoors. As far as the materials on the exterior, the bag uses Yeti's Tough Skin Fabric, which is a 700D nylon. It feels very rugged, like it's going to hold up well over the longer term. On the bottom, you have a durable and reinforced panel to give you a little bit more protection and peace of mind. This fabric also feels like it's going to offer plenty of weather resistance. Everything feels super well built. And then you also have some very nice aqua guarded YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was a little bit sad to see that there's no external water bottle pockets. Yeti's Crossroad series does have a different sort of style of water bottle pocket, which I'll cover later in the video. Um, so along the outside, you have a series of handles. You have one on each side, you have a top handle, and then you also have a handle on the front near the bottom, which is gonna be great for loading this into a trunk and overhead storage compartment. It's also gonna be awesome for carrying this like a briefcase if you don't wanna wear it on your back. And on the sides, you also have some additional attachment points, which are gonna pair up well with something like a carabiner. Currently here, I have my hero clip attached, but this is always a good spot to attach other gear, such as a hand sanitizer or something like that. And then you have the compression straps on the front, which we saw on the 27 liter crossroads, which are gonna be great for holding larger items that don't fit inside the bag. So if you have a jacket, a yoga mat, maybe even a skateboard, these are gonna be able to secure that well. You can fully remove these straps. It's a pretty easy system. They just have these clips that just kind of slide out. So it's, a, it's nice that they're pretty tight. So they keep everything secure when you're using them and then they slide out easily if you don't wanna use them. One thing that's still an issue here with this bag as well as the 27 liter is that these compression straps can get in the way a little bit when you're trying to use these side zippers, especially if you wanna go all the way down, it can be a little bit of a pain to kind of unzip it all the way and zip it back up. So that's something that you'll keep in mind as you're using them, but still like that they're included and the fact that they're fully removable if you just want a cleaner exterior. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 22 liters, which is a nice daily bag size in my opinion. It's able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me without getting overwhelmingly big. And I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it still maintains a pretty slim form factor that hugs my back well, which makes it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit, and carrying on to pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. These straps are fairly thin. They don't offer as much padding as you might expect for a bag of this size, but like I experienced with the 27 liter Crossroads, they actually ended up feeling more comfortable than I would have expected. The material on the inside is a little bit softer. It's not super breathable. And these straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. On top of that, you have a variety of attachment points on the straps where you can attach additional accessories. You've got a little loop here where you can maybe hang your sunglasses. And then you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. As far as the back paneling, this has also been pretty comfortable. It has the same type of padding that we saw on the straps and that's distributed all throughout. This isn't the most breathable back panel. This fabric itself isn't that breathable. You do have the indented Yeti logo here, which gives you a little bit of elevation, but again, just not a ton of airflow getting in there while I'm wearing this for a longer period of time throughout the day. And then the last thing I'll call out while we're on the back panel is that you have a nice luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag keeps things pretty minimal. You have a less pocketing here than what we saw on the 27 liter Crossroads. So that one had a quick access pocket on the front. It was zippered and it was, you know, a really great spot to be able to grab 
some items. So I wish that that had been included here. The main quick access pocket that you have is actually at the top and this is very well protected. It has that sealed zipper and it also has a flap that comes over the top. And this is gonna offer plenty of space, a really great implementation on this quick access pocket. It's gonna be able to handle bulkier items such as my sunglasses. With their case, I have my Apple Magic Mouse. I tossed in a GoPro. And then I have my Apple AirPods. Even with those items in there, there was still some leftover capacity. And on the inside, you also have a little lanyard with a plastic clip, which is gonna be a good spot for your keys or maybe a multi-tool. The remaining organization is contained in the main compartment. Before diving into that, I did wanna revisit the side zippers that I had showed a little bit earlier. So you have one on each side and they serve slightly different purposes. So on one side, you have a zipper that's more meant to allow you to easily grab something from the main area of the bag. While you're still wearing it, you can swing the bag around and just reach in and grab a jacket or some headphones. Uh, this is again where you can see the compression straps kind of getting in the way for anything that you might want to grab quickly. So you'll have to keep that in mind depending on how you pack everything out. It can be a little bit hard to open it enough to actually grab what you need if it's a particularly large item. And then on the other side, you have an additional zipper. This is meant to be the water bottle pocket. Um, this is what Yeti has done in their Crossroads series is uh, I guess to just maintain a kind of more streamlined look. You still have sort of a water bottle section that's just separated out of the main area. And so currently in here, I have a 20 ounce water bottle, which fits in there comfortably. You've seen this in a lot of my other daily bag videos. I do think a larger water bottle could potentially fit, but you are sharing space with the other things that are in the main compartment. So you have to balance that out. For me, that 20 ounce water bottle fit in there nicely. I could get it in and out pretty easily, especially if I'm not using the compression straps. And it's nice that I can still access my water bottle without having to take the bag off or open up the main compartment completely. And then moving into the main compartment, this is a top loading bag. So it has this lid that kind of flips open to give you access into the main area. I like that this has a lighter lining so you can still sort of have some contrast against the items that are in your bag. First thing I'll call out here is that there is an additional zipper here, um, on this compartment that is the top quick access area. So if you have a lot of items in there, when you open the bag up, you can access this area regardless of which direction you're facing. So that's a pretty cool idea. I like the implementation there. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that this does take up volume from the main compartment. So, you know, that'll maybe bump into some of the items that you have here near the top. Beyond that, 22 liters of capacity. It can hold a pretty good amount for the compact size that it has, even some bulkier items. So diving in, first thing that I have here is my Beats headphones with their hard shell case. And then I have a packable rain jacket. Down below, I have my DJI Mavic Mini with its hard shell case. Next to that, I have the Evergoods Civic Access Pouch, which has a lot of my dongles and cables, chargers, and things like that. And then the last thing that I have floating here down near the bottom is just a full-size moleskin notebook. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. First thing I'll call out here on the side, this is the water bottle compartment that we saw that you can access from the side area. So it separates out the water bottle from the rest of the items in this compartment. And if you don't wanna use that, it can just kind of tuck away so you have full access to this main area if you want. And with the space that you have here and how much this comes up, this is always a type of bag that I think can work for minimal travel. If you wanna toss in a packing cube, a dop kit, maybe an extra pair of shoes, and you'll be good to go for a weekend trip. On the front of this section, you have an additional zippered pocket that's kind of under this quick access pocket, so it can be a little bit tricky to access if this is completely full, but it's nice to have at least one area to kind of separate out smaller items that you don't want getting lost in the larger area of the main compartment. So this offers a pretty good amount of space. Um, and in my case, I just use this to store a deck of playing cards. I have the little manicure set that I normally carry with me. Beyond that, there's not much else on the inside, but there is a little loop here where you can potentially attach the lanyard from the top quick access pocket if you prefer to have it here or just clip on additional accessories that you might wanna have with you. And then on the back of the compartment, you have a separate sleeve that's gonna be a good spot to store something like a tablet or some documents. Currently what I have here is my iPad mini, but this would probably be able to hold up to a full size 10 inch tablet comfortably. I like that this is a little bit more elastic and soft, so it feels like it's gonna offer a little bit of protection to any device that you place in here. And then behind that, you have a padded laptop sleeve that's gonna be a little bit thicker than the slip pocket on the front. It's also suspended off the bottom of the ground. This is gonna be able to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch laptop pretty comfortably. Currently what I have in here 
is my 13 inch MacBook Pro. You can see there's some leftover space at the top. And so pulling my device out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. It does come up a little bit, so if you have a slightly thicker device, you should be able to squeeze it in there, but it might start to get tight if it's a really thick kind of gaming laptop or if you have a lot of other items in the compartment. Regardless, with the amount of padding and the fact that this is suspended, it really feels like my device is gonna be well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. So a nice job in this main area as far as, you know, just offering a simple layout, a decent amount of space. And if you're looking for a very durable bag that's gonna offer a nice capacity and a more compact size, and this is gonna be a great option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a pretty good experience testing out the Yeti Crossroads 22 over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company site or Amazon for about $200, which is definitely a bit of an investment. The bag is really well made and it has some interesting features. However, there's gonna be some other great options in this price range that may be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag it made me think of is Yeti's Crossroads 27 liter backpack, which I mentioned during the video. I really enjoyed testing this out. It has a very similar aesthetic build quality to this smaller version, but it does come with some additional features. It's got extra compartments. I really like the layout of the laptop compartment. You have a front quick access pocket that is not present on the smaller version of the bag. And then you also get some additional capacity, which is always nice to have. So if you like this style of bag or you're looking for something that's gonna be very rugged and work well in the outdoors or any environment that you take it into or you're just a big fan of Yeti and you're looking for something that's gonna give you a little bit more organization and space, then the 27 liter Crossroads will be a great option to consider. The next bag this made me think of is the Patagonia Black Hole Pack, which comes in at 25 liters, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger than the Crossroads. Uh, it also doesn't have the same level of structure and padding. It's a much simpler bag. It does, however, have some nice features. It's comfortable to wear. It's got a nice organizational layout, water bottle pockets on the outside. It still has a little bit more of a functional vibe. You got some webbing, attachment points, so it's gonna work well in the outdoors. You have one main compartment that's gonna have a laptop and tablet sleeve. Really just simple bag overall, a little bit lighter. Um, and again, it's not gonna be as well padded as the Crossroads 22, but if you're looking for something that's gonna be versatile, that's gonna offer a decent amount of weather resistance, and that's also gonna come in at a slightly lower price point, then it's gonna be a solid option to consider. Another bag this made me think of is the Timbuktu Lane Commuter, which comes in at a pretty similar size range. It's maybe slightly smaller, between 18 and 20 liters. It's got a more kind of modern and techy vibe. It's got some nice touches if you commute by bike. It's got reflective accents on the front. It comes with a removable rain cover, really weather resistant materials. It's got a comfortable harness system, a pretty simple organizational layout, but, you know, just some pockets on the front that are pretty easy to access. You have a laptop compartment that's gonna offer good protection. And so, you know, very comparable bags. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more maybe urban or city focused, that's gonna maybe match up better in an office setting and that doesn't have all the attachment points um, that this bag has and that also has an external water bottle pocket. If those are the types of things that you're looking for, particularly as you're riding a bike, you wanna save a little bit of money, then this is gonna be another good option to take a look at. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Evergood Civic Half Zip 22 which is a really solid, minimal, everyday bag. It's meant to be a crossover pack that can go into the outdoors, kind of a similar vibe, in my opinion, to the Crossroads backpack. It's more minimal. The aesthetic is very subdued. That's what Evergoods is known for. Solid build quality. Um, pretty similar organizational layouts. They have a laptop compartment that's in the main area. This uh, Crossroads backpack does have a luggage pass-through and a few other kind of nice additional features. Um, but the biggest kind of difference and benefit from the CHZ is that it has the external water bottle pockets, which are very popular um, with this bag. You can really place a large water bottle in there comfortably, be able to access it. Um, so, you know, that's definitely something to consider. Both come in a similar price range. Um, and again, are gonna be very durable, but if you're looking for something kind of with this sort of a vibe that's gonna offer those external water bottle pockets and a little bit of a different harness system that maybe will offer uh, some additional padding, then this is gonna be a great option to check out. With that being said, the Yeti Crossroads 22 holds up pretty well against all those options. And if you're looking for a durable EDC pack that you can take into pretty much any environment, then this is gonna be a good option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the Yeti Crossroads 22 and how it compares to some of the other great EDC bags that we featured on the channel in the past. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.